Hi everyone, it's Amelia again. Uh, I've just had a message shot through so I thought I'd cover this straight away. Um, I'm just running off the top of my head so uh, this is completely off the cuff. I'm talking today about uh, two-dimensional chromatography or 2D chromatography. So hopefully if you're watching this you will have already or, or already know what chromatography is. Uh, if not, maybe go and have a bit of a, a read about chromatography. Um, but essentially chromatography is the separation of components and so um, if I think about 2D chromatography I'm going to use uh, an example of uh, let's say um, like a very like a black ink for example and so um, if you take a black ink and you separate it so when, when we say one dimension and two dimensions so if we do a normal I'm going to talk about paper chromatography so if you've got a normal paper chr chromatography um, piece of paper you put your uh, origin down the bottom there and you spot on your samples down the bottom and, and you uh, put that sample into some kind of mobile phase and that mobile phase rises up your uh, stationary phase and has you have a separation. So that would be what I consider to be 1D chromatography or one dimensional chromatography. So um, imagine out of one of your dots, uh, so when you have your separation, you'll, you'll have your origin down here and then you, have, you might have one dot here and one dot up the top. Um, let's say the one down the bottom is purple and the one up the top is yellow, for example. So um, now if you think about it, a purple dot could potentially be made up of a red component and a blue component. But when we do a particular uh, separation with a particular um, solvent, that purple component uh, may not be completely resolved. We may have the overlap of the red component and the blue component, hence making it look like it's a purple component. So we employ that second dimension um, in your chromatography. You actually, what you would actually do, so you do your separation in the one dimension and then you turn your chromatograph around the other way, so you turn it 90 degrees, change your solvent to something else. Um, so if you, let's say, if you use water for your first dimension, you would actually turn it 90 degrees and change the solvent to maybe acetone or ethyl acetate or ethanol, something like that. Change the polarity in this case of that solvent. And so by changing the properties of the solvent, you, you turn that um, chromatogram or 90 degrees and then perform another separation and so uh, by doing so that second dimension will actually separate your purple component into your blue and your red component so that's essentially the theory behind 2d chromatography um, when we're thinking so that's I've kind of talked about uh, a theoretical example in terms of gas uh, in terms of paper chromatography or thin layer chromatography. It, when we're talking about HPLC or GC, um, we don't have, you know, we don't have a two-dimensional uh, uh, platform on which to do it. We have a column, right? And so whether you use GC or HPLC, you, you have your column, whether it's um, a G, in a GC, they're usually long and, and um, wound up into a, a coil, if you like. Or a HPLC is like a, a, you know, up to a 20 centimetre column. That would be considered your first dimension. And so if you have components that are, um, you know, if you think that you've got two components that are eluting together or coming out at the same retention time, what you can do at the end of that column is feed the elu at the eluent or the, the liquid coming off the end of that first column into a second shorter column. And so, of course, your, your, so you probably can't change your solvent between your first column and your second column, but what you can change is the, uh, the stationary phase. So the stationary phase in the first first column would be very different to the stationary phase in the second column and so that would allow for you to have a, uh, a separation in the second dimension. So if you really liked, uh, if you, you need to know more about this, what I'd really recommend that you do, there are some, uh, a couple of really good uh, exam questions in the uh, 
in the past exams from Vika, uh, what I'll do is I'll leave a comment in, in, in the comment section underneath this video with, uh, with a reference to that exam question. So you can have a look at the types of questions that may be asked on a VCE style exam. Um, and you can sort of have a look at that and get your head around what 2 DGC looks like. Um, unfortunately, I don't have my whiteboard and all that jazz going on today, but hopefully that's been been helpful. Uh, if you found it useful, please give it a like and a share. Um, and uh, thanks very much for joining me. And uh, this is Amelia from the Zen of Chemistry, www.zenofchemistry.com. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.